Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. I pray that everyone is safe and well today. I pray that everyone is digging deeper a little bit. Not because I'm saying it, not because I'm asking it, but because we know we have it in us to do, to dig deep. And it's a challenge. You know, I can speak from personal experience that more often than not, you know, we feel alone in our struggles. You know, we feel by ourselves in our struggles, you know, and when you feel that way, then it's so hard to, you know, muster the strength to do the things that need to be done, do the things that we want to do. You know, that feeling of loneliness, man, that is the, that is the root cause of the suicide rate being what it is in America and across the globe. It's feeling alone. It's not what we've done. You know, you have teenagers out here killing themselves because they're being treated a certain way because uh, of their lifestyles, you know. Uh, and this is statistic. The suicide rate among homosexuals and lesbians and uh, that community, it's extreme because many of them feel alone. The suicide rate among teens who have debts to pay, college debts, is getting higher, right? The suicide rate among young black youth in America is getting high because we're trying to be what social media, what the television is telling us to be, and we're not measuring up in the eyes of others and the pressure of feeling alone, the pressure of being mocked, of being joked, uh, whether rather uh, 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 indirectly or directly, you know, is causing children to kill themselves, to not even experience life, to not even know the beauty of life. You know, too many of us are worried about having name brand clothes. You know, we don't find beauty in this. We don't find beauty in just looking at trees, looking at a, a waterfall, looking at stream, just having a good walk. We don't find beauty in that. We find beauty in looking at TV and watching these gossip television shows. And I'm not judging for those that may be watching that have a, you know, a fascination with that. Do your thing, right? But I am speaking facts. I'm speaking from personal experience and I'm speaking from uh, and for the experience of others. The weight of feeling alone. And that's what I'm speaking about. I knew a guy in uh, Nottaway prison in Virginia named Pac-Man, young guy from Richmond. Did about 12 years. Uh, and about four years ago, I saw him again. I'm like, Pac, what you doing back here? And he told me a story about he had a job and, you know, a guy that he had had issues with a year prior, he got killed in the alley. And he swore up and down he was innocent. Do I believe him? I guess 95% of me does, right? And the reason that is because I sat down with him and I listened to him. And, you know, the way the story was, the, the, the way he, you know, chronologically told it, it seemed feasible that he was innocent. Um, then I know Pac-Man, like he wasn't a really violent type of guy, but that doesn't mean that he couldn't have done it, you know, honestly. But I know that when he came back, he came back with 47 years under what we call the new law, which is time that was given after 1995. And that time you're going to do 85 plus percent of your time. Whereas prior to that, if you, let's say you did uh, 40, you know, you got 47 years, you might have to do 15, 20, you know, depending upon parole and the severity of it. But now you get 47, you're going to do 40. Um, and so he came back. And I hope you all can hear me. I know it's windy, but I wanted to come to the roof and just talk because there's a degree of serenity up here for me. You know, it's a degree of peace. It's quiet except for him, these AC units um, and the cicadas in the air. But uh, yeah, so he came back with 47. He had three daughters. And uh, before I left, one of his daughters, I believe the middle daughter, she was like maybe 20. She had a, um, a child, right? So he's a grandfather and he's feeling good. He had his mom, he had, uh, 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 he was, you know, the Innocent Project was actually trying to help him, but there was no room. He knew of two other Pac-Mans in the city of Richmond 
and he was trying to figure out, you know, how his a name got attached to this case. Suffice it to say, last year, February, he tied a sheet to his neck, he jumped off the top tier, right? So, and I knew the brother, so it so weighs heavy as I think about it. But the weight of feeling alone, it wasn't the hopelessness of not going home that I believe made him commit suicide. It's feeling alone, it's having people out there fight for you, but they're not gonna fight for you because like me saying that I believe maybe 85, you know, 95% of the story, his family the same way. You know, he did have a job. He did have a job. That's that's a proven fact. But, you know, our families know that we have the potential and we've done wrong before. So when we tell them, I need you to find $5,000, $6,000, $10,000 for a lawyer or an investigator to help me get out, then they're not going to put all that behind us because they're living in the projects. They're living in this urban environment where they're living from check to check. Right, so he felt alone. Last night I was in Potomac Gardens, and you know I, I had a conversation with the youth, uh, myself and one of the sisters. She's the mother of a few of the youth there, and the discussion was bullying. Why do we bully one another? And during the course of these are like eight year olds, nine year olds. During the course of I'm, I'm talking to them, I started off a little mild. They picking with each other, you know. They using terms like. Man, you sound gay, bruh. So I'm like, ho, 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 don't say that, man. Don't say that. What did he say? And one of the kids had allegedly, while I was speaking, you know, he just kind of talking to himself. He like, mommy and daddy. So the other guy looking at him like, man, what you saying mommy and daddy for? A man, that's gay. So I'm like, don't say that. He might have his mind on his mother and father. Don't, you know. And then, you know, one of the young ladies got into it with another young lady. So I'm like, ho, oh, and I get a little intense because I'm like, listen, you have to see one another like family, but this has to be taught in the house, you know? We see one another like competition. We don't see one another like family. We see one another, man, and you know, oh, that light-skinned girl, I can't stand her. She thinks she cute, you know? Oh, that girl, she black, ew, I don't like her. She thinks she something, she thinks she's real, or, you know, look at her, she got a big butt. She, you know, she got a big breast, oh, and, and, and even with among men, you know, like, oh, he think cause he got a six pack, he cut up, he that dude, or he think cause he can rumble, he a beast. You know, he think because he got guns and he's shooting, he a killer for real. He ain't no killer. My man a killer. And it's like, this is what we do all day. You know, you get a pair of shoes and, you know, I look at them like, man, they ain't nothing. They cost you a hundred and some dollars, but they ain't nothing. But I'm just mad because you got them. You know, I, I, I got them. I had them before. You know, it's like all day, every day. And then we look at, we look for support, right? And we don't extend support, but we look for support. And we look for support because we don't want to feel lonely. We look for support because we shouldn't be lonely. But we don't offer it. And so we put ourselves in a position to be lonely. You know, I watched the, the sister at Potomac Gods and she has, you know, several kids. And I look at a lot of the women. You know, really, when I come over there, I look at, you know, I look around and it's mostly young ladies. Sometimes you'll see the young brothers, they out there and they hustling, they doing their thing or whatever. And I don't know what they're hustling, but they're, you know, they're out there and they just stand around, you know, in the hallways, you know, rolling dice and just whatever. But I look at the mothers, man, and I'll be honest with you, this ain't no fluff and flair. You know, and this is for anybody watching, you know, mothers, right? The males who are watching. Them, you know, you, 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 you brothers and sisters in prison or juvenile facilities watching, I play, pray that you're listening, you see? And I spoke about this a long time ago, man, a couple of months, I guess, and, you know, intermittently between them. With us, we have power. We have strength. We have the ability to add to one another. That's a fact, man. The people that made phones, cell phones, are humans. The same blood running through their veins runs through yours. You know, the people that made airplanes that are in the air, humans like you and I, the same blood that courses through their veins courses through ours. These buildings, these wonderful structures, these cars, everything that we see, everything that we are witness to every single day is made by a human being with the same blood and the same potential uh, in them that we have in us. We have very little time to keep wasting on what somebody else is not doing. We need to ask ourselves, what are we doing? Again, I'm talking to myself. This is every day I'm talking to myself. What can I do to be better? What can I do to uh, do better? How can I add on to myself and add on to the ones I love and care for? 
So I look at these mothers and so many of them, man, they have, they have to wear the, the burden and the responsibility of raising kids, man. And when I say, and I don't have kids. And so for you fathers out there that are watching, man, I salute you from the heart because that means that you're going against the grain of, man, just sleep with any woman, do you, and the women gonna take care of the kids. You know what I mean? You going against the grain, so I respect that wholeheartedly. But you have women out there who are doing this every single day. I watch mothers, you know what I'm saying? Coming to work, they're holding children's hands at the school bus, at the metro bus, they're holding the hands. Where's the father? He's not there, he only comes around when he wants to sleep with somebody. And I'm begging you women, I don't care if it's me, Demand more of the men that you care for that are in your lives. Demand more of them because you should not have to bear the responsibility and the weight of motherhood by yourself. I watch you women, man, and I admire you from the bottom of my heart, man, because I see it and I don't even know the half of what you do. I just know a smidgen of what you do. But when I sit down and I think about it, I'm like, man, that's awesome. These women are something, man. To wake up and take care of one child is something. To do two, three, four, five. To take children to work. To get their cars fixed. To help them find jobs. To fill out all their applications. To take care of their bank accounts. To wipe noses and change diapers. To go to graduations. To go to schools when incidents occur. This is what you all do every day. And again, there are men out there that are doing it. And I salute you men. But for those males that may be watching this, man, that have sisters who struggle, man, step up and help your nieces and nephews, man. Help your sister, man. Help your mom a little more. Add on to your clan. Don't take from your people, you see? I did that. I know what it is, man, to remove myself and the little bit of strength I possessed, whether it was the physical strength and helping with groceries, whether it might have been financial strength, you know, strength to help with, you know, bills or any little thing. I removed that from my family, from my community, when I chose to be a street dude, when I chose to impress those on the street more who faded easily than those who wrote letters, came to visit me, sat in court, you see, cried behind my back for me, prayed for me. So for those that are watching this and that feel lonely, you feel alone. You really aren't, you know. Harriet Tubman felt alone when she, in the middle of the night, walked, ran, hid, slept on that underground railroad, man, freeing slaves, you know. School teachers feel alone because they're sitting there taking care of children for, for eight hours that aren't theirs for a check that ain't even worth it but because of the love they have, man, to add on and add to, they do it. You have nurses and doctors out there saving lives, helping lives. You know, they get a little you know, better check, <laughs> you know, but, you know, they don't have to. They don't have to, but they do it. Because most of them, when they were young, they just wanted to help people. So they felt alone. They feel alone from time to time because people can't relate to them. People don't know what it is to sit there, you know, all hours of the night and talking to other people about their problems. And I'm talking about the other person's problems. To be an ear, to be a shoulder, man. And I know it because I've always tried to be an ear and a shoulder, you know. And I care. I have a genuine love and a genuine care for those, man, who are sincere in their efforts to do and be better. And just humanity, I really do, I really do. You know, no matter race, creed, or color, man, because if we all get on this planet and we all start thinking selflessly, selflessly for other people, courteous. A man in a DC, you know, that's what I met. A man in DC the other day shot at a woman and, great, and hit her, and she got two kids in the car because she cut them off. How you do that? How you do that? You know, how you drive past a house and just shoot it up, not knowing who's occupying that house and you end up killing a child, man. We don't want to talk no more. We don't want to talk no more. We go from zero to 60 in a heartbeat. And I know that feeling too. And for those that I may have done that with, I apologize, I work on it. We're fashioned and molded by a society, man, that, you know, 
pushes us to that. Every TV show, you got shows out here now with grown women, mothers and grandmothers throwing beer bottles at each other, throwing liquor bottles, drinks at each other, getting up, chasing each other, fighting each other. I'm like, these are grown women, mothers, grandmothers, sitting there with nothing on, wear what you want to wear, but this is the display and our young ladies are watching this like, ooh, I like her, ooh, I like her, she cute. And all they do is talk about fashion and men. And then we wonder why these girls out here having sex with men looking for fashion because what they see, what is promoted, what is stuffed down their face is that same thing with the males. All these movies, I watched them coming up. I watched the boys in the hoods and the menace of societies and the scar faces, you know, the godfathers and we were impressed and moved by that. But man, we need so much more and we need better. We need examples that will encourage us to be better men, better fathers, better uncles, better brothers, better mothers, better grandparents, better society. We need that. Like I say, we can be entertained. All right, be entertained. I'm, I'm going to watch some entertainment. But children don't know the difference sometimes. And we need to groom them better. We need to mold them better. So, again, hopefully, you know what I'm saying, I, you know, I can be heard. I'm bringing the phone a little closer because I heard the siren. But, again, for you mothers family members for those that are watching if you feel alone you are not alone man it's okay to reach out for help right it's okay to ask for help and sometimes you just don't you know don't talk just you know genuinely just generally talking sometimes you have to say specifically to someone that you trust like i need your ear i need to get some stuff off my chest you know because it's just weighing heavy on me about life and i'm just feeling real real bothered you know you have that right have that right you know and man you know women keep looking for that help man do not feel alone out here and if you do there's somebody out here willing to listen you just have to be willing to talk you know that's all you know so again i thank you all for listening to me i thank you all for walking with me this journey i thank you all for um, contributing there are so many of you all um that have contributed and i'll say it on you know uh, my page, man, you know, because I don't think anybody have a problem with it, man. Maybe one of my next sessions, you know, I want to just say, send a shout out to everybody, man. You know, have people have sent my nonprofit uh, through my cash app money. And I, I don't, you know, it's not for me, it's for the kids. And we take them to parks. We took them to a park recently out here in um, Clinton, Merlin called Louise Korska Park. Um, and, you know, some of the food and stuff was purchased by, you know, myself and, and, and a, a good a, a good friend of mine, man. And she was there and uh, one of the mothers of the children, we had a ball. The kids had a ball, you know, looking at turtles. It was frogs. It was geese. They had a ball, you know. So for those that contribute clothes, you know, food, ideas, books, and I've got plenty, I thank you. Advice, encouragement, I thank you. I'm humble. And so with that, you know, you all have a good day. You have a productive day. You know, walk knowing that you're not alone. And if you feel alone, trust yourself. Trust, trust your strength. You from, you from some ancestors, man, that have been through hell. You know, you from some ancestors that have been through hell and survived. You know, and someone with a smile on their face, right? So dig deep if you have to walk alone for a moment. But know that the journey gonna find people along the way that are gonna be there they're gonna be sincere and they're gonna be dedicated man to being authentic in your life you know appreciate them then you know and you'll find yourself man you know having uh, uh, uh more added on to you so let me you know let me go i'm at work let me get busy i appreciate you all again have a great day taking the sights Take care. Peace.